Hello and welcome to the State of EVs in the UK, the interviews for 2020. This follows up on the interviews I did last year at the Fully Charged Live. Obviously this year they're going to be slightly more virtual, but still got a lot of good guests. And my first guest is James Coates from the James and Kate YouTube channel. He also runs the MG ZS EV Owners Club and has an awful lot of knowledge about the whole world of EVs. So this is a really interesting interview. I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, please welcome James. Hello, Gary. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it seems ages ago we had, had did that last in, interview over at uh, Fully Charged Live a year ago in a bit. A long time ago. Yeah, I remember it being very loud and uh, <laughs> a, a struggle to hear, really. But um, yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully we, people will be able to hear this one a bit a bit better. Okay, excellent. So I just really wanted to have a chat about the general state of the EV world and, and what's really changed since last year, because we were all quite excited last year. We, we were looking at all these new charges due to come online and lots of yeah. excitement, good serve and things like that. And obviously the world's changed a bit since then. Yeah. And things haven't moved quite as quickly as perhaps we would have hoped. Yeah, I think probably we can put some of that down to the coronavirus nightmare that uh, the world's yeah. been having. So I think that, that has definitely hindered things. But you did mention uh, the fast chargers, Polar, for example. Yeah. They're doing quite well. They're uh, rolling out some 150s at the moment. And I think have they got six, six or seven paired 150s in at the yeah. moment. Instavolt are also rolling out higher higher capacity chargers um, and grid serve as you mentioned we will be going down to look at the first site in the not so distant future we've been invited yeah. down for that that's going to be excellent so really looking forward to getting down there and seeing what's going on because that that sort of setup i think is is paramount for what we need dotted around the country yeah it'd be really interesting to see how that goes and i noticed they've applied for planning permission near norwich as well which is it's a very um a yeah. useful route down for people going to the coast so yes uh, it's, it's gonna be good and talk about instavolt obviously they've just opened their first was it six charger hub at uh, necton again in norfolk they seem to people seem to like norfolk for the moment <laughs> yes so that's on is that on the a47 just is, yeah, the a47 yeah, yeah so that's how i get to norwich so yeah. from where I live, so straight down the A47, and and that's just perfect, absolutely yeah. fantastic. It, yeah, it's exactly where you need it. Um, Definitely. So I know the area well. I was brought up around there, so I, I, I can I can definitely say that's a, that's an absolute perfect place for 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 a hub to be, and it's great to see see more charges going in than just the one or two we 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 had up to this point. Yes, absolutely. That that alone, if you if you think back, if you go back ten years when Ecotricity was sticking in one charger here, there, and everywhere. And and for that that time it worked because there was one or two electric cars, but now the amount of cars that are coming online and the speed of growth of, of the EV sector, we we need to have that just just to just to give people the the chance that they're going to turn up and be able to charge without having to wait. We're not just not having to wait at all really. That's that's the ideal situation. Pull up get a charge, get gone. And, and of course, the more the more charges you've got, the higher the turnover speed and, and the accessibility for everybody. So yeah, that, that's that's definitely a good thing, definitely. And I th think also the other thing about having multiple charges is if one of them's faulty, you've still got another choice to get to one. It's, uh... Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, so unfortunately, that's uh, one of Ecotricity's downfalls, isn't it? You've got no redundancy for a, a single charge <laughs> unit. And, and I, 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 I remember watching a video that you did recently when you were talking about ccs and uh, the the um the availability at um, ecotricity and how some of them don't even have a ccs so yeah uh yeah so yeah it's, it's a good thing so your ccs and chad mode up on a on an instavolt aren't you so you're yeah you're you've everything covered pretty much yeah this it, it, you're laughing unless you've got zoe which is obviously <laughs> not not a new zoe we've uh we've oh, oh, yes of course the new, the, yeah, the yeah. New zoe. so you've got a review of that out i believe soon yeah we're we're going to the cars going back on uh thursday i think thursday this week it goes back and then um yeah we'll we'll shoot we've done a few bits of filming uh just just while we've had it it's been quite difficult because Obviously, we've got lives and stuff, and yeah. uh, we, we, we've got we've got Florence. But uh, yeah, we've 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 covered some good distance in it. I think we've been near 800, 900 miles by the time it goes back. So yeah. it's been it's been worked hard, um, and it's been good. It's been good, def, definite improvement. So, um, but which is what you expect. You you want it to get better, not worse, don't you? Yeah, I think it's interesting that they've gone for CCS on that. I mean, obviously, they have been the, the last remaining Type Two <laughs> rapid charging. 
Yeah, but it, but it's an option. Yeah, yeah. Which is odd. I mean, it, they do. They, it does have twenty two kilowatt uh, AC. Yeah. Um, on board charging with the um, which the all had. So that that's you're never going to be really stuck, but. Ultimately, I think CCS should be a standard fitment now for everything. I think anything yeah. coming to market just should have CCS, and, and that's it. I don't. It gets confusing for people when you say, "Oh, you can charge on this on AC or this on DC," and people just want to charge as quickly as possible every time, and, and that's it. But yeah. um, it's it, it's definitely better than it was. So yeah, it's a good car. It, it does look like a good car, but I I I borrowed a Zoe last year to come to the EV festival, Gaiden, and uh, yeah. and and other than the, the the range limitations, it was a great car to drive. It was really good. Yeah, so the it, it's a tricky one, you know, because we all drive differently, and yeah. there'll be people out there who can exceed the WLTP uh, uh, recommended mileage, and there'll be people out there who can't get anywhere near it. And my driving style probably differs a lot from many people. I like to drive at 70, whether it's raining or, you know, whether it's hot. I just like to get there, and I try to use it as uh, an internal combustion car would service. So um, it's the range. The range is good. It's not. It's not what they're saying on the WLTP, but it's it's good enough. It's good enough for most yeah. people. You know, it's more than a forty kilowatt hour leaf, and yeah. there's plenty of them out there. So yes. if you're moving, yeah. moving from one of them to a Zoe, you'll have no issues. A fifty Zoe. Yeah. I guess. I mean, that's that probably brings us one one of the things we were talking about last year, which is this whole thing about range anxiety disappearing. Um, Yes, definitely. So um, range anxiety is a funny thing because anybody coming from an internal combustion car, especially if they come from a diesel Passat or something, they, they're used to seeing 600 miles when they fill it up and, yeah. and then they don't need to fill it up for you know three weeks and, and that's great. Uh, and But actually you, you'll find that when you do use it, you realize actually you could probably get away with 60 or 70 miles range in reality, maybe less than that. So it, it's, it's, it starts off as a big thing and then gradually it gets ebbed away. And then before yeah. you know it, it's, it's, it's gone. And I'm sure that's, that's the case for many, many EV owners. Yeah. I think uh, this is a sweet spot, I think, for, for people. I mean, uh, I find that the maximum I, I really want to drive on a, on a, on sale on a motorway is, is two hours. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm pretty much there. Uh, the, one of the longest journeys uh, we did was uh, from our house to Gretna Green Services, which is 224 miles. And we did that in one hit. Um, and I, I was uh, a bit of a weird conversation, but I was desperate for the loo after about 120. <laughs> yeah. and I, I, just, um, I just tried my best to get there. And then when I got there, I was busting. Um, and then when I got out of the car, I could barely stand up because it was that bad. Uh, that, that 224 miles is three and a half hours in a car. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, just ridiculous. It was I, a silly I, thing I, to do. And, I, I mean, I, I, I'm often getting told by people, oh, I want a car which can do four hours driving. I, I just can't see how you can do four hours no. driving. <laughs> it just, oh, it just no. doesn't, doesn't work for me. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think, I mean, I think two, two hours driving, that 140 mile, 150 mile range is, yeah. is, is, is good enough. I mean, and we we both driven well. You've got an MG ZS EV. Um, yeah. That they they that that's is. I mean, the one I've been driving has been showing me 160 mile range for the last couple of weeks. Um, that's that's good enough, I think, for most people. Yeah, I remember when it turned up actually, and I I think I we were about five days in, and I charged it, and it said 212 miles. <laughs> I was like, yes. But actually, in reality, when when I started driving it normally, that came down to 140. But then, actually, 140 is enough. It's re easily, easily, Kate. That's my journey to to and from work for a week. Yeah. So it's good enough. Yeah, easily good enough. I mean, we know. I mean, you you run the MGZS Facebook group, and and, and there's someone on there at the moment on his way to Italy, isn't there? Sort of, uh, <laughs> in the MGZS, which is crazy. I don't quite how he's making that with the COVID stuff. But <laughs> did, did you see the video of him on the autobahn singing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I looked and I was like, "What is this?" And then I realised. And I looked. And I'm like, outside lane on the autobahn singing in a language I don't understand. But he was happy, so he's yeah. having a good time. Yeah. yeah so he's doing the car was going fast and not using too much juice so that's, that's yeah that. I, 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 sorry gary i was going to say that that's just shows that how a very reasonably priced car 
is, as an EV can can be very very functional. Completely, and that's only going to get better. So um, there is some good news from MG uh, sort of going forward that um, people always want more range and more battery. It's it's just a, a thing that they want. Um, and the MG ZS, uh, sorry, the MG5 will come with a larger battery, uh, a better coefficient of drag, so more more range on the WLTP, similar storage. In fact, I think it might have more. Um, and then MG ZS EV later variant will also have a bigger battery. So uh, it's, it's only getting better. But back to your original statement, that is a very, very cheap EV, yeah. whichever yeah. way you look at it undercuts nearly everything else on the market so and its capability is is just phenomenal nobody nobody can take that away from mg it for but for the price you pay for the car you get i don't think anything beats it genuinely i don't and i think the interesting thing about that is that in two or three years time we're going to have a lot of those come onto the market second hand used cars yes. which, and that's going to make that whole getting an ev a much mm. more economical way of doing things um, yes and and the warranties there as well with with the MG. So the, the I think they warranted the was a battery was it a hundred thousand miles? Something was it, like that. Yeah, but it was, it was a good warranty. So I mean, we average I think the average mileage per car now is seven thousand nine hundred. So you've got over ten years use there, well over yeah. ten years use. So at still in warranties. So that's 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 good to know. And and like you say, people will be able to jump on board, get into an EV, buy it at. Re- a really competitive price and it, it, it they can still pcp second hand cars so you know if they go to the right place they can get a good pcp deal on that and and that will be equivalent to just jumping in a in a petrol or diesel so yeah. just with cheaper running cost and i think the the, the, uh, the running cost is as you point out there is that's the other thing we, i think mm. people don't always get the fact that if you're paying x so you might you might end up spending say spending 100 pound more a month on PCP compared to, to the equivalent diesel, yeah. compared to, yeah. but you're going to be saving way over hundred pound a month on 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 cost. It's it's interesting. A, a good friend of mine has got an Audi uh, A4 two liter TFSI Quattro. All it's it's a very nice car to look at. But we sat down and worked out the figures for what it cost him, and with the PCP. And with the fuel and the insurance, it cost him over seven hundred pounds a month to own. So we did some figures, and we worked out that actually he could have a long-range Tesla Model Three for less than he's paying for that car right now. So, yeah. and that and that car is in its third year of a PCP. So it's it, it, if the, if you can look beyond the initial figure, the screen price, then you know some good deals to be had, definitely. Now, the other Sorry. thing we we mentioned last last year uh, when we were chatting was the effect of at least I thought I thought the effect of having this company car um, to a percent benefit in kind this year would have on the second hand market going forward. Yeah, and I certainly did see. I mean, we've certainly seen a huge update in in EVs uh, as company cars. I mean, uh, we had a, a Jaguar I Pace group meet up today where about half the people on the call were people from the nhs with their the company their car, cars they've got a fleet deal um i basis wow so, so I, and that's that's sort of i mean you just i've seen that growth in the last two three months mm. uh, which has been interesting to see but obviously in three or four years time all those cars are going to come on the market yes and, and, and you're gonna have some pretty expensive cars which should have depreciated quite a bit um and be be available for purchase and they'll still be brilliant cars i mean it's yeah. not like a like a petrol or diesel where a, a fleet car which has done a hundred thousand miles is going to be not not really something you want to buy with an ev it's not a problem is it <laughs> no it's not but and you're going to get in there and it's going to have 400 brake horsepower and it's going to be a rocket so yeah. <laughs> whether it's done sixty thousand miles or it's done 20 it's, it's it's you know it's got massive amounts of torque and massive amounts of bhp so what, funny as you say that you um i think jaguar just had, Jag, the jaguar ipace just has had its best two months of sales for a long long time so uh, that might be down to the nhs because i know the nhs have been chucking out some ridiculous deals uh, i mean i've got a, a well a brother-in-law who's uh, who's a doctor and he had an ev which for the same price is about 600 pound a month and he got it for 300 including insurance mm-hmm. which is just completely and utterly insane you know it's, it's, it's phenomenal absolutely phenomenal so um yeah it's looking good it's looking good benefiting kind nhs deals and you know and if anybody should offer a deal like that the nhs i mean they yeah. they need clean air don't they because the impact that 
dirty air and pollution has on the NHS is is absolutely you know, yeah yeah definitely so good move definitely yeah, a good move yeah, good move. And, and and they're all enjoying the cars which is, is even better for, for my point of view it's <laughs> good good I, I did have to laugh one of the questions we got got to that day was how can i secure secure my shopping in the boot because I'm, when i accelerate it goes everywhere <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I think the only way around that is to stick it in the passenger footwell. That's the, yeah, that's, that's insane. <laughs> but that's that's the sort of acceleration you get with EV, and and I think that's the, I mean, okay, you, the MG ZS EV is not the same as the i pace in terms of acceleration, but it's still plenty fast enough. Um, yeah, absolutely, it is good. Most, Sorry, Gary. Just back to your eye pace. You can buy a cargo net actually on the accessory. Yeah. If you, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just thought so. Uh, which will, which will keep the shopping pinned down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are ways. There definitely are ways. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. came up with quite a few answers. I think. Well, I think that was, that was quite an amusing <laughs> <Yeah>. question. <laughs> We had a few technical ones as well, but that was a quite amusing one. But I think that it's interesting. I think people don't just don't until you've driven an EV, you just don't realise how they perform compared to other other vehicles. I mean, it's you're talking sports car performance in in uh, uh, well, yeah. the an EV, an SUV shaped body, and it's just crazy. You get that. Yeah, it's it, that. It, it's funny that it's when I think back to how um some of my friends and uh some of the people that we sold evs to uh, sorry not myself but through eco cars and and they it was very much a case of well we're, we're going to have the ev for just going around town and we're going to keep the internal combustion car for everything else and then slowly that they, they, they swap places and then the internal combustion car gets chucked into the into the side netting and the ev becomes the sole car and yeah. uh, and but yeah it, simply because they get in it they drive it and they think god this is amazing you know what, what what i've been missing out for so long but it is just a case of getting them behind the wheel and once they're behind the wheel i think they're uh, by and large they're sold there's obviously the ones who will say no i i like a gearbox and an exhaust i like to smell the petrol and you know you, you won't change them but for the most part, it's uh, they sell themselves. Yeah. They do. They do. I mean, you've got all the all the benefits. You've got cost. You've got the performance. They're fun. They're fun to drive. That's the thing I find. That's... Yes, <laughs> the the iPace in in particular. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I I went to the chip shop the other day in an iPace um, to pick up um, thirty portions of chips with uh, with another lad. And um, I've got to say, it, it's only two miles away, but it was a very very fun drive. I can tell you. <laughs> Yeah, we did it. We did enjoy it. So, yeah, yeah, very nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's a great car to drive. It really is. It so, is. actually, let's just go back a little bit. You mentioned the MG5, which I think is a really important car. Yes, it, that is a very very important car. So, um, there's a couple of cars I I see as very important. I think the Nissan Leaf and the Renault Zoe are both very important because they brought low the lower budget car availability to to most people um the tesla pushed it i think the reason we have the amazing i pace is 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 probably because of nissan renault and tesla combined and yep. the, the, what they did and everybody else went oh, we need to build electric cars and then of course jaguar bought us that so uh, i think i think we've got a lot of cars there that we wouldn't see if it weren't for them cars but the mg5 now we're we're further down the road and we're, we're right in the mix of things. There's a lot of cars out there which are very good. You've got the E-Nero, um, you've got the Kona, you've got the new, new high range Zoe, the Leaf, the I-Pace. You've got loads at different prices for different people. But we still don't seem to have anything for everybody. I mean, let, let's be honest. Everybody isn't going to go out and buy an I-Pace, a Kona, an E-Nero or a Zoe because they're still mega money. But the MG5... The price of that is at a place where if you PCP'd it and if the, what happens with the government and the £6,000 scrappage, which we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed, comes off, it's looking, it's looking very lightly, comes off, you'll be looking at a car that's £200 on PCP. It just, yeah. it just looks, it looks too good to be true, but I really hope it, it, it works and they can they can send us the numbers that we want because i think the demand will be high and that will be one of the cars that goes to the masses and people can afford because at the moment they're, they're, they're still quite expensive and out of reach of a lot of people yeah and the other thing of course about the mg5 is it's it's the first production ev which is an estate car yes it is, it is. which is which which is a, a, i think a huge gap in the market 
it definitely it's in the uk it's the first um estate car because i think i think it's been out in china for four years yes it did. sorry i should yeah. always say that yeah yeah but uh yeah so many people want an estate car people people say well i need an suv for space but i don't want an suv so they're like they look at the mgzs and go that i need all that space in a different shape uh, and, and actually if you've got dogs a state car brilliant perfect chuck them in it's it works for so many people and i've got to say that when it comes out when i've test driven it if i like it there probably will be one sat on our driveway yeah so very yeah. very very lightly it's, it just seems i i just I, it's just too good a car to miss i think and yeah I, uh, it's going to be good it's going to be yeah. good <laughs> So uh, that actually brings on one of the other questions I keep getting asked. <laughs> um, I see yeah. the look, glance over your shoulder. <laughs> Check out your girl's bonnet. <laughs> uh, I think I know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> actually, no, let's have a slightly side idea. So um, one of the things I'm keeping getting asked about at the moment is towing. Yes. With EVs, because obviously that's, in, that's an area where a lot of EVs are limited. And I yes. guess that's because of the, what the weight of the actual car to start with. Mm -hmm. Yeah gross train weight yeah. um so yeah so, uh, so a lot of people get confused about towing so an ev has no problem towing absolutely no issue at all it will tow anything far better than a petrol or a diesel it just won't tow it as far because it doesn't have the energy density of fuel yeah. that, that an internal combustion car has but if you want to tow something up a hill with an ev it will it'll outperform a, a petrol car no problems at all um, like you're you're right in what you say. The weight of the car obviously reduces the the weight of what you can tow. Um, but the it is it is available on some EVs. I'm not sure about the MG5. And I'll be honest, I did see the question brought up, and it it looked like it was a no, um, which, which would be a shame because you do see many cars of that shape towing trailers, caravans, and yeah. and things around. So, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. It's 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 definitely something that needs addressing but i suppose when manufacturers look at it and they go well what population of of the the, the country tow and they say well it's you know it's it's 1.1 percent and they go oh yeah 1.1 like of the population tow. well why do we need to make a car that tows if it's only 1.1 percent of yeah. the population so and and when you look at actually how many times a year you tow it's like it's yeah you've got the manufacturers of it's like that point of wow well, why do we bother why do we bother it's not that if if i said to you look i've got a car that tows and one that doesn't it's going to increase my sales by not enough to even warrant it probably so yeah. it's a bit of a, a chicken and egg situation i think with it but it 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 will come it will come yeah i mean it's interesting because I, I do get it's a question i get asked quite a lot um and particularly on car towing caravans that seems to be the, the big Big question come on. I guess people who have got caravans probably have got a reasonable disposable income, so there may be someone that, that perhaps yeah. would be targetable. But uh, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. <laughs> but I, the, the the thing I always say to people is, I say, look, I say you tow your caravan once, twice, three, maybe four times a year, and they go, yeah, but I go to the south of France and I I fill up and I drive all the way here, here and I fill up and I drive all the way here, and I say that's fine. Drive an EV, hire a car. Yeah. That's it. Just hire a yeah. car with a tow bar. Go and do what you're doing, and then bring it back, park it up, get your EV back, and, and that's it. The amount of money you save on fuel in your EV will, will pay for that easily. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so sadness recently, you got rid of the Model S? Yes, yeah, I've got to say that was a, that was a very sad day. The, the great thing about the sale of the Model S was we were in a position where we could pick who we sold it to. Yeah. and uh, we had a, a very very nice gentleman a really really lovely guy and he it, uh, we've been in contact a lot a lot of text messages and whatsapps and lots of questions because it's his first ev and he's he's loving it and he's looking after it and and that's that's really what we wanted it makes yeah. us feel better about um about where the car's gone but when it drove off i can say that um that i, I did feel a little bit empty for a little while so yeah it's um yeah it's been a sad day we've still we've had to give him access to our app because he can't have the tesla app until he's got the logbook gone into tesla and shown them and then they can swap the app over yeah. the problem with that is we get to see what it's doing constantly and we, we see it driving around he's plugging it in he's supercharging it he's here he's here and <laughs> like, oh. but um yeah he's he's loving it and um he works for a very large construction company and he is the guy who is putting in all the charges in all the sites 
and will potentially be the guy who brings the fleet of company cars over to EVs. So very much his experience with the Tesla will be how it will help move that forward and hopefully we'll we'll bring them into EVs. So hopefully something good will come out of it. So fingers, that's, fingers that's, are that's, that's good. I mean, that's, that's good. Yeah. So I'm not going to ask you the question I thought you'd, you'd probably think I'm going to ask you, which is what car you're going to replace it with because I know, I know that's coming tomorrow and I wouldn't no, be surprised. I'm, I'm happy to tell you it is an EV. Yeah, it's an EV. That's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, it was a long, drawn-out thing, actually. We 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 went through a lot of cars. We, we were very lucky that we were able to get hold of most of the cars to test drive and, and use, and, and we've driven most of them as well. Yeah. So we, we've got a fair bit of experience with them. But, um, yes, it's tomorrow is a uh, new EV day. <laughs> Which, obviously, by the time people actually listen to this recording, it would be some, some time ago. So <laughs> they, they'll, yes. they'll, they all know before I do, yes. but that's, that's, that's fine. I, yeah. I, I'm waiting to be surprised tomorrow, so we, we will see. But, uh, it's, I mean... Uh, I, I I actually first came across you with that long journey you did over to Europe in in the Model S watching that video. Um, which which journey was that? I think it was the first one you did on. on the... so, God, that's four years ago. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah. that was that, that was, and and that that proved to me that I could probably live with a, a te- with a Tesla or, or any EV um, doing the journeys yeah. I was doing. Um, oh, excellent! Oh, well, I've got, that that makes me feel good. So I think that was um, it was two days old. And yeah. we went to we went to Annecy and then went to Bordeaux and yeah, it was it was it long it was a long journey actually it was a long journey in anything it was just a lot of driving and um, and yeah I probably no, I would do it again and we will be doing it again but I don't know I don't know that we'll do that whole journey because it was just a lot of driving squeezed into a small amount of time so, yeah yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're doing anything other than Tesla as well, it would be a bit challenging in France at the moment with the, the number of uh, charges off offline. Yeah, but I, I think even Tesla uh, they're having the same issues because a lot of Tesla charges over there are in hotels. So I think they've they've got a few which are offline. We're okay in the UK because th- there are a few at hotels, but by and large they're they're at uh, services and other places now. But um, ha- um, how are um, Ionity doing for uh, charges in in Europe at the moment? But, they're okay. I mean, France is a is a bit of black hole at the moment. They are they are going to put a few more out there. I, I the one which I'm quite excited about is I saw a briefing from Fastnet a couple of weeks ago, and they're they're talking about putting a whole network through Belgium and France because both Belgium, wow. Belgium and France are, are quite difficult places to get charges at the moment. Um, yes. Well, there's yeah. high speed charges. There's a few 50 kilowatts around, um, but they're, they're not particularly brilliant. Um, mm. Obviously, once you get into the Netherlands and beyond into Germany, you've got uh, ionity and fastnet everywhere so you, you and 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 obviously yeah. we just had this announcement from the german government that they're, they're putting in what's it ten thousand charges infrastructure, infrastructure so that's that's a that's a pretty amazing thing that they're, they're actually going to fund them um wow so, i didn't i didn't even know that when did I that think, I, I think it came out today i believe um well today when i'm recording this so so um but yeah that is i suppose it's a thousand a thousand charges to be installed each a thousand sorry, a thousand charging stations each of at least 10 charges to rival that's the tesla supercharger network which which the government the german government helped fund as yeah. well yeah. yeah they they well there's no denying that they're on board yeah i mean yeah they're, they're, i mean if you look at tesla now tesla superchargers are really really well placed across germany they all seem to be nicely thought out and yeah. and if they can it's never a bad thing more charges yeah. the better <laughs> more charges. i mean so I, mean, I have to say, say in, in germany though, there's probably enough charges anyway i mean i've done i've done yeah. that trip to berlin a couple of times now and, and that that there was never a problem finding charges in, in germany somewhere right. else yeah but germany's been good um, I, I watched you do that actually in your eye pace where um you're using ionity and and uh, what do you call it when it just charges when you plug it in it's it just reads auto charge. Auto yeah, auto charge, yeah. so plug, plug and charge auto charge so, so fast yeah. i've got that at the moment which i love um yeah and that's working in the uk now as well which is even better on the fast net um oh, so was it fast was, net? Yeah, it, faster, faster, faster yeah. Auto, so Ionity are doing plug and charge. They've, they've announced that it's coming very, very yeah. shortly. Fastnet yeah. are already doing it. Fastnet weren't doing it in the UK, but they are now. Um, oh, so, brilliant. Okay. So if you go up to Sunderland, um, I've set my I set mine up in Europe, but as soon as I'm going up to Sunderland, plugged it in, it just started charging, which is oh, just fantastic. amazing. That's what you need. 
That it is. is. Uh, yeah. And this, uh, I know there's a slight delay on it at the moment because the CCS standard for plug and charge has been, been out for a while now, but not all the charger manufacturers have actually adopted it. Okay. okay. Uh, but the modern chargers are going in, all the new ionities will have it, uh, et cetera. And uh, so it's, that's slightly different to the way Fastnet do it because Fastnet um, used one of the other things, which is in the CCS standard, to detect which car's connected. And then yeah. it, it knows the first charge you have to do on the app, which tells you your account is associated with that car. And then it then it does yeah. their numbers, it does it. But with Ionity, they'll be able to charge back to the car's account using the VIN number um, from the, the feed. And you can actually set up an account, a charging account as part of the CCS standard, which will just be networked. So, so yeah, it, very, very it exciting. Builds you. Yeah, yeah, it's just bill you. And, That's and, what you need. Yeah. And I think, I, mean, I don't know if, you, if you've seen my ch quotes charging manifesto, but one of the things I, I'm really keen on there is, 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 is simplifying the whole user interface for charging. Yes, and I definitely. think that's a really good step for that. But I think the the other thing which which are, a lot of the modern chargers are now doing is this step away from having to choose which plug you're actually plugging in. It just detects the fact you've plugged a, a, a CCS in or you've plugged a Chatmo in, yes. and it knows that's the one you want to use, yes. and then and then promises you to pay, or 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 if it knows that you've got an account, it just goes off and it, charges you. Yeah. That, that, that's what you want. It's got to be simplicity. It needs it for, for people to understand it. It needs to be easy. And yeah. and and what you when I watched you drive to Berlin, it just plugged in, no problem. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Easy. So, and, and, that, even, and, and, to be, and to be honest, even the ionities weren't ionities weren't bad on on that because I was mm. using a, a card to, to just tap and start charging. So yeah. they only had, I think, need about three button presses to get going, which is, is and the, and the modern ionities only need two buttons presses to get going. But uh, yeah. Brilliant. I mean, the 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 other thing that I've seen you touch on, um, I think it was on Twitter the other day when you talked about um, the the canopies and yes, um, yeah, yeah, coverage. And, and I was stood. I went out on my electric bike today, and um, I had to pull into a petrol station because the weather came down horrendously, and it made, got me thinking about if I was charging now, I'd be wet. You know, no, no two ways about it. And where you said Fastnet, actually, Fastnet uh, provide canopies. GridServe will uh, yeah, provide absolutely. canopies. And I think actually, because they're doing it, I think everybody else will start to do it as well. I think but, before long, it, Instavolt will go, we need to do that, put something up. So, so I'm, I'm told, somebody actually replied to me on Twitter and told me that the part of the issue there is that you, you need a different level of planning permission to be able to put a, a canopy up as, as opposed to just putting a charger up. God, it's insane, isn't it? <laughs> so, absolutely uh, insane. Uh, I mean, I, and I'm, I'm not necessarily saying I want the, the Fastnet type um, sort of big canopies over the top. I, I'm quite happy with, with just a sort of sticking out, out bit just to cover the, me yeah. and the screen when I'm, I'm, I'm setting it up. It's, it's Although on your bike, you'd want a bit more coverage. Yeah. How, how incredible is it when you say, yes, certainly you can have 500 megawatts of power in a cable running down there, but oh, you can't put a canopy up there. That's a different level. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like nuts completely nuts but hopefully hopefully they'll they'll get over that and, yeah um, i think they will i mean i think the more. competition will make it happen i think as we get more and more charges throughout the country which is happening yes uh, people will start saying well i've got two charges here i'll go with the one with the cover on if it's raining definitely definitely the one that works the one that i can use contactless with the one with the cover yeah yeah definitely yeah and Con I, I, contactless being the other point yes I've, yes I've seen you touch on that as well you just people just want to go Beep. Yeah, and go. And that's it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so you either do plug and charge where, where you don't even have to think about contactless, or you can just do contactless and then pay. Yeah. Um, and uh, no, I, I have a bit of a bee in my bonnet about charging different money for for contactless and and, and other methods, but <laughs> I don't think that's no, I, I understand. We we've got a jet wash around the corner at our local Morrison's, um, and I can pay with my mobile phone. I can literally, I just go up, I press the button, beep, yeah, and it pays. Yeah, that's the way it that. If I can pay for a jet wash with contactless, yeah. I should be able to pay for anything with contactless. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, what, while we're talking about that, one of the things I quite liked, uh, we've spoken about the, the cost of Ionity and how you can save some money on that with certain types of charge cards. And, and that's another one of these bits of complexity, having to work out how to pay for something to get the cheapest yes. rate on it, which shouldn't, shouldn't be the case. But, but one thing I really did like about the charge point card app was they've actually enabled that as an NFC RFID tag. So you could actually tap your phone to, to use ChargePoint. Uh, okay, so you, I've, I think somebody did mention this to me. Could I use that on GeniePoint? 
use my phone as an RFID. Yes, you should be able to. On, yes, yeah. I, I think so. That, that's a really good idea because yeah. I, I use that nearly everywhere now instead yeah. of a card. Yeah, uh, and it, it works fine. So yeah, yeah. but that, another good thing. Another good yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. And that charge point card is, is really good for um, Instavolt as well because obviously they they run the Instavolt network, so it just yes. tap and go on yeah. that. So that works. But I found I'm using that more often than, than not now, especially with the cheap cost on Ionity. Although, yeah. although it doesn't work everywhere on I honestly, because it's it, they, it takes them a while to put the uh, charges on their network. <laughs> so oh. They know about they know about them, but when they do, it works. The, the something about Arnity actually a, a, another point. So you need contactless. You just need ease of use, ease of access, canopies. You need all that. But actually, the app that people want to go into. I met, I've looked through the Arnity app on regular occasions, and and it's just it's not very user friendly it doesn't seem to be intuitive where if i look at polar for example i go into polar i can look where i am and just tap it it comes up tells me the address tells me what it is how many charges and whether it's available with honesty it seems to be we well, don't know what you're going for you can't it, it, do you know what i mean it just doesn't yeah. seem to flow the same way and that's something that's going to need addressing as well because people people need ease again and that's yeah. that's what they've got you know with the petrol station they pull in they've got petrol or diesel contact this pay at pump it's just it's simple it's simple yeah. and that's what we need and they've got a canopy yeah, I think I kind of I think yeah. that that's where this grid surfing comes in because one of the things which I've I've often had uh, spoken about is the fact that one of the problems we have with EV charges is they're not manned. There's nobody there to look after them. Nobody to no. actually. So yeah. you see, so, so you are limited in how you pay. I mean, obviously, GridServe could take cash, for example, to pay for the charge if you really, if you're really desperate. They, they are taking cash. Yeah, they are taking cash. So, um, oh, I never use cash. <laughs> yeah, I know, but but the, but the options there, if you wanted to, I mean, but, well, that's, they, that's what they told me last year. I mean, they may have changed that plan, but that that's certainly yeah. one of the things they were talking about. So, having someone there means that you've got that option but it also means that someone's monitoring those charges and making sure there's no problems with them yes so you're not going to get i mean most of the, the charger operators are pretty good at maintaining their charges they, 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 but there's always going to be a slight lag from when it's reported to mm -hmm. when it's fixed maybe a day day and two and that yeah. means and especially where we've got the single chargers that's a problem because you, yeah. you're relying on it you turn up and you can't actually use it I know, I know. and if it's your last chance it's well it's the end then isn't it you can't it go is. you can't do anything i mean Fortunately, we've got less black holes in the country now. I think there are, most places have got access to one or two chargers um, yeah. relatively close by, within sort of 20, 30 miles. Um, whereas before, you could go to 100 miles without finding a charger. So it's, it's. Um, I, remember, I always remember going over to Wales and thinking, where would I find a charge here? <laughs> it's, it's, there wasn't anything at one stage, but now there's lots. Yeah, not yeah. I've, so still, when I look at Wales, I um I I see these massive areas, but then I think actually most EVs can bridge that no problem at all, yeah. and, and actually they can get where they need to go. But Wales is definitely an area that needs some attention. I know different providers are trying to get in there, but there are some places where there just isn't electricity. When you drive yeah. through the mountains, there's just no electricity there, and that's that's all there is to it. It doesn't reach some parts, so. But um, yeah, longer range EV should mitigate that to to a certain degree and um, make, make things slightly easier. But definitely, that uh, it needs to come up to speed. And Norfolk, yeah. Norfolk, I think is a is yeah. A, Norfolk was well as as we mentioned as I mentioned earlier. There's a couple of coming on on in Norfolk now, which is is looking good. Um, good. Actually, again, again, going back to that Fastnet presentation I, I, I went to, they they actually had a whole raft of they were looking to install in in the UK UK, including Norfolk. Wow. Excellent. That, that is good news. But uh, back to GridServe. Um, what what I think they were saying a hundred sites. Yeah. Uh, and the great thing about what they're doing is, which no other provider, as far as I know, is doing, is they're going to have a massive balancing sort of ability from the grid, where actually when nobody's charging, they can store, and then when they need to draw, they can draw from the, the battery capacity. Um, and at the same time, when there's a high use, they can balance it by having that buffer of battery storage in the middle. And of course, they've got the um, they've got the solar farms that they're going to have around them, and hopefully wind as well, which which will help aid them. So uh, I think the way that they're trying to balance things out is is very good. Instead of just having you know 
X amount of megawatt draw at any one time and, and it, some, some part of the grid having to cope with it. I think that's, um, that's a very good thing. So, um, and of course, just the sheer size of it and the amount of charges. So, it's, yeah. it's, it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to, to seeing, seeing your report from there. Right? In fact, I might come and join you up there. So this is where it goes on. <laughs> well, the, the, this one is going to be at the first one, which is, is it Essex? I think it's down yeah, in Chelsea, Essex. Yeah, Chelmsford, is it? Chel Somewhere, or no, oh, no, no, Braintree. Braintree, 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 Braintree yeah. It, that's it, that's so, it. yeah, we'll, we'll, be taking a, we'll be taking a drive down there. I don't know, because obviously because of coronavirus, they've been knocked back quite a long way. So, um but we'll um, we'll we'll definitely if we can charge that will be brilliant. But I'm I'm not expecting to be able to, but to just see it and yeah, to see, see what see yeah to see what's coming online. That's that is something very very special and yeah. important. Definitely, it is. It is. Well, I think that's a good place to leave this. So so thanks ever so much for for joining me again, James. I, I, no we'll problem. probably do, do this again next year. <laughs> yeah, anytime, anytime. And, uh, and I think next year it's going to be a completely different world for us, but uh, one way or the other. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Things are changing very quickly. So um, if you need to do it before then, then uh, you're more than welcome. I'm happy to talk to you again, Gary. It's been great. No problem. Speak to you soon. <laughs> All right. Take care. All the best.